Paul writes to the Thessalonians in his first letter to them, in the fourth chapter of his first letter, in verse 18, he says, Therefore, encourage one another one another with these words encourage one another with these words what words well let's start with verse 15 because he brings up the word word for this we declare to you by a word from the lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so... We will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So we got two different groups of people here. We have people that are alive and are remaining here on earth. And then we also have the ones who have fallen asleep, right? The ones who have fallen asleep. He describes them as the dead in Christ. So they have physically died. They are already with Christ. They just don't have their physical bodies back. The bodies are still in the grave. And there's those of us that will remain here on earth, that will be here on earth, that remain that we are with the Lord too. Technically, you're seated in Him in the heavenlies. You're seated in Christ. There's others that are with Christ too. But they'll, they will be waiting to put on a glorified body. Putting on oikaterion, as Paul calls it when he tells the Corinthians about it. So, we'll be caught up together with them but we won't precede them he says so they will go first and then we also will come along amazing beautiful and um you know paul talks about a person that was raptured if you will because this caught up this caught up word in greek is harpazo it means to be snatched up, and it's where we get the English word rapture, all right? He talks about a man that he um, he knows, Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 3. And I know this man, I know that this man was caught up into paradise, Let's start with verse 2. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. Interesting, right? So he... He knows somebody who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. He didn't know if the guy was in the body or out of the body. He says, God knows this. And, it, and I know that this man was caught up into paradise. So we have this third heaven being called paradise, right? Much like the garden that was called Eden, a paradise, the garden of delight. Caught up is Harpazo. So, he knows a man that got a glimpse of Harpazo. Got to experience something that you and I are waiting to experience. So, Paul talks to the Thessalonians about this Harpazo. That 
we being the body of Christ who remains, right? Will be caught up together with them. Those that have already died, they will get their resurrected bodies with them and their bodies will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye, Paul says. You'll be transformed, you'll be changed. So they will put on a glorified, immortal, oikaterion body and then Right after that, immediately after that, they go first and then we go next. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. And he says, therefore, encourage one another with these words. So I want to encourage you with these words. I don't want to take too long. I got stuff I got to do, but, um, this is a beautiful thing, you guys. The clouds, caught up in the clouds. Why the clouds? I mean, there's there's scriptures that describe people as clouds. They gather together. You know, we, 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 we are rivers of living waters living in us. So these living waters gathering together in the clouds. You know, I know you think of the clouds when you read this verse as those clouds that you look up into the sky and see. But I assure you, we're talking about different clouds, right? Just like you can look at the ocean, you can look at a pool, you can look at a river, you can look at water that's inside your sink. Those are waters, yes, that's water. But when you have rivers of living water in you, that's different. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. The living water you have in you is different than the water that you see in the ocean or a pool or such, right? Just like the breath of life. God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. He wasn't breathing oxygen into him. He was breathing the breath of life into him. A little different than, than oxygen, right? It was life. So being caught up in the clouds. So there's, there's a story I want to share with you in the book of John. And I had shared, I've shared, I've shared this story in a past video, but it's amazing when you reread something in the scriptures and there's something that maybe you just thought like, I know this means something. I know this means something here, but I'm not quite sure yet. And then the, then, and then five minutes later, I'm done with the video. I get in my car, you know, to take off. I was walking around outside and Ding, the light went on and I'm like, oh, wow, I wish I could share it with them right now, but I had already made the video. So, but five minutes later, after I ended the video, I'm starting my car. I just look at the Bible verse again. I'm like, don't, oh, here's the answer. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to share the story with you and then I'll share a little revelation that I found in here. Um, this is a beautiful John chapter 21. I'm going to start in verse three. Okay. Simon Peter. This is after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Okay, you guys, so Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as the day was breaking, interesting, right? They caught nothing in the night because you are what, children of the day? And just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now... They were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. Let me just stop here right now. I just want to explain something to you. When he says, cast the net on the right side of the boat. Now the right in scripture, the right hand or the right side is a place of favor, a place of grace. All right. Jesus is described as the right hand of God, right? the strength, the grace, the favor. So what does Jesus say about 
people that he places on the right. Matthew chapter 25. So you can't take it literally like he's putting you on his right side. You know, you're seated at his right. Well, yeah, but you're seated in him, right? You're seated in him. So the right hand is the right hand of favor. It's a place of favor. Matthew chapter 25, verse 33. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Why does he say that? He says in verse 31, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Okay, so now we have an identity thing. A sheep and a goat, they look so much alike, but they have different DNA, right? So the ones with the DNA of sheep, he will place them on his right. The ones with the DNA of goat, he will place on the left. They look alike. They might even sound alike, but they're not the same. So going back here to John 21, verse 6, he tells them to cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. You'll find some. They cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. Now I want to pause here for a moment. And I want you to see something. I want you to see the rapture, the harpazo here. I want you to see the net as because the fish are caught up in the nets and you and I are going to be caught up in the clouds. So this catching up, there's a gathering and we'll be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, right? So it's not the regular air either, you guys. We're talking about, you can call it a dimension. You can call it, we're entering a realm that has a different frequency than this realm, just like the garden. When Adam and Eve were in Eden, that realm had a different frequency the one, than the one outside of the garden. The garden was the place where heaven and earth had touched. It was a spiritual realm. So you and I are going to be caught up in these spiritual clouds. What they look like, you know, if it's just a gathering of people or whatnot. But these fish were caught up in nets. They're in their first heaven, the waters. That's their first heaven. Coming out of that first heaven, now they're entering into mid-heaven, the mid-heaven, the, in the middle, the in-between, between their heaven and then the third heaven that Paul describes, a man that went to the third heaven and it was called paradise, right? This is Eden, you guys. So the fish, they're in their first heaven. They get caught up. They are taking into, into the mid-heaven, right? And they're caught up in nets. We get caught up in clouds. And then what happens? Verse 7. That disciple whom Jesus loved, therefore said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped and threw himself into the sea. And when it says he was stripped, it's the Greek word gumnos. It means naked. Naked. So Peter was naked and he threw himself into the sea. Just like Jesus says, you know, cast those things into the sea. So, you, you know, when you think of being stripped and naked, you think of Adam and Eve, I do anyway, when they ate the forbidden fruit and then they saw that they were naked. 
and who's the one that clothed them? They tried clothing themselves with fig leaves, but it says that God clothed, clothed them with garments of skins. Very interesting, garments of skin. Hmm. So anyway, Peter, he throws himself into the sea because, you know, we're clothed in righteousness. Anything that's not righteous may be cast into the sea, right? He casts himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat dragging the net full of fish. There's a whole bunch of fish in here, you guys, right? Scripture says we're fisher, fishers of men. So please see these fish as yourself. Those who remain. Remain where? Well, the fish remain in the water. They're gathered together. They have a calling. They're there at the right hand of favor, at the right side of the boat. They're there. They had a calling. They answered, and they were there. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. This is so interesting, you guys. So this hundred yards off, not far from the land, we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, in the air. Oh, not far from the land, right? A hundred yards off. When they got out, on the land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Mm. So there's some fish that are lying in a charcoal fire. They're already there. Those represent the ones that were dead in Christ, who were sleeping, their bodies were in the grave, and now, whoom! We don't precede them, Paul says. They precede us. So these fish, those are them. <laughs> those are them, okay? Those are those that have already died. Your loved ones that have died, there they are with Christ. Jesus said to them, no, oh, wait a minute, with fish and laid it out. Okay, so when they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus is our bread of life. This is going to be a new spiritually glorified body, the bread for the fish, right? Jesus broke bread, said, take, eat, this is my body. We're going to have new bodies. This is their, the bread and the fish together so they're caught up and they get new bodies okay just like we will jesus said to them bring some of the fish that you have just caught so here's the people that were caught up in the rapture the ones that were left remained okay bring the ones that you have just caught so simon went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of the large fish, 153 of them. That's a number that still, I had a friend send me some calculation stuff and it was very interesting because uh, <laughs> the way the way he did it, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. It comes to 2024. I won't share the calculations right now, but it was really interesting. I'm like, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. You know, when you add the disciples and Jesus together, and then you times it by 153. It ended up being 2024. Very interesting. But I'm not going to do the whole rapture date setting game. I won't do it, you guys. It says, so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish. 153 of them. Oh, large fish. So I think... We're going to put on a spiritually glorified body, not these puny little things. We're going to be something else. Do you hear that? Large fish. Large fish. They stand out. They're different. And although, although there were so many, the net was not torn. So there's going to be so many that are caught up, you guys. But that won't break the clouds, right? Not these clouds. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now listen, 
I want to, I just want to stop there for a moment and, and say, when they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place and, and, and Jesus already had the fish there. But you know, it says in verse 11 that Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore. Ashore. So listen, they, they bring this net, they put it in a boat. Now the fish, they go from their first heaven, they go into mid heaven, right? When they're in the air, they're placed in a boat. Third heaven right there. Third heaven. They're taken ashore. This boat comes to shore with a net full of fish. Now listen to this, you guys. If the boat represents third heaven and then it, it with the fish are taken ashore, I want you to see this is, let me just share it, Revelation 21. And then I got to get going. I got to get going. Okay, Revelation 21. Starting in verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven. John was there, by the way. John's writing this. John, the one that Jesus loved, the disciple Jesus loved, he calls himself. He was there during this event with the fish. And now he says in Revelation chapter 21, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Behold! The dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. And they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor outcrying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done! I am the Alpha and the Omega. In Hebrew, he would say, I am Olive Tav. Olive Tav. Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament. In the New Testament, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. See, Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. I am the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. Meaning you don't owe anything. It's free. So you can't buy it. This is amazing, you guys. This is So when the disciples, when they pull these fish ashore... They got the boat, the third heaven that these fish experience. And then they come ashore. And this is, this is beautiful because now I'm seeing why it says they, they came ashore. Because the shore is this place where heaven and earth meet like this garden paradise called Eden. Where they are joined together, this new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven. It comes and blankets the earth. The earth be, gets something kind of like what we'll have. We'll be putting on oikaterion. The earth is going to get its own oikaterion because heaven and earth are going to just engulf and become one. This Eden, this Eden that was, that was on earth will be spread all the way throughout the earth. Whom? And the earth will become a complete paradise. What do you think about that, you guys? Isn't that beautiful? You and I are going to be part of this. 
He says to encourage one another with these words. I hope these words encourage you to get today. I hope they do. It's something that we are so looking forward to, you guys. I am. There is so much more in that story. I mean, we could just dissect it for a long time and get so much more out of it. But hey, I got to get going. I love you. I hope this has blessed you. Have a great day. And then we'll see you next time. I wish I, I wish I knew how to edit this video and make that tire screeching noise like hitting the brakes on your car and just sliding across the the asphalt peeling out um oh, my sunglasses just fell when i hit the gas the reason is because you know i i said earlier in the video you know i was i had to get to that appointment i was just on a time crunch i said there's so much more in here and i can continue on but you know i'm right i'm out of time gotta go well, you know, I can always continue the video. I just didn't think of it. So I just want to continue. I want to, I want to give you a little stuff. So we read the scripture already. So I'm going to just go from memory and talk about some things that was in those, that was in those Bible verses. Okay. We had a picture of the rapture in this fish story. How do I know that? No, nobody taught that to me. The thing is, when you when you look into the scriptures and you you can you can read them on a surface level, you know, first heaven level, it's still heaven, first heaven, just like those fish in in the sea, their first heaven. You can go into the scriptures just a little bit deeper read them on a, a mid a mid a mid level where you go a little deeper than just the surface but then you can go super deep into the scriptures the scriptures are powerful and you should go into that third heaven level of the scriptures when you read them it's kind of like this take an onion You've all peeled onions before, haven't you? Onion has that outer part. It's still part of the onion, but you're peeling it off. It's not really part of the onion, the edible part. It's like the outside stuff. Kind of like you, if, if you were like a snake and you shed your skin, that skin comes off of you. It looks like you. It's the shape of you, but it's the old you. And it just gets removed, right? And now it's lying there. And you're looking at this thing that used to look like you, but it's just a heap of dry skin, right? It's the old you, and it's been removed. Now, when you take an onion, you peel off that outer part, that flaky stuff, and then you go into the onion layers and if you were now now before you peel it you smell it you can tell it's an onion it's powerful it's an onion when you read the word of god even if you read it on the surface it's powerful like that onion now if you take a layer off of that onion all around the onion now smell it way more powerful and then you take another layer off of it and another layer off of it and now you smell it. It's that scent is much more powerful than it was before you removed those layers. Now it's still the onion. The whole thing's the onion. The whole thing's the word of God. Reading it on the surface, leaving it, reading a little deeper, or going even into the depths of it is still the word of God, which can make you cry when you start to see the power of the written word of God which came from the spoken word of God now you go into the next layer of that onion the center of the oven of the onion now you are going deep into the spirit of the scriptures you 
are igniting something so powerful that it has to bring tears to your eyes when you see the revelation in his word. Like peeling that onion to its center core where all of that power just comes out of it and you just can't help but cry. And when you go into the scriptures and you enter into the third he heaven realm of the scriptures, you can read them on the, on the surface, the first heaven. Go a little bit deeper, the mid heaven. But then when you get really, really deep into that third heaven realm, how amazing. Now, here's the other thing I want to share it with you because we were reading about it in those verses that I was sharing about that story that if you just read it on the surface, oh, Peter wanted to go fishing. The other guy said, hey, we'll go with you. They go fishing at night. They catch nothing. Now the light is coming and the darkness always flees from the light. And now it's morning time. The light has entered, the darkness has fled. And then a voice, children, you catch anything? No. Cast the net to the right side of the boat. Cast them to the right side of the boat. The right hand of favor. You See, so you can say, oh, they just casted it to the right side of the boat. All right. And, and just read the surface. Hey, you're still reading the word of God. But then why... Did Jesus, why was he so particular about saying, cast it to the right side of the boat? And it's the right hand of favor. It's the right hand of favor. You're on God's side. You're on his side. But you're not at his side, the right hand. You're, you're actually inside of him. You're on his side so much you're seated in him. And he's seated in you. This is a place of favor. That's why he said, cast it to the right. It's describing the favor of God, the right hand of God, who is always Christ anyhow. So then, let's continue. So these large fish, 153 of them, are gathered together. There's significance in that number, you guys. Whether what my friend shared with me about doing a little multiplication stuff, if there's something there, not quite sure. Possibly, but there's something significant about that number, and I haven't quite grasped it that yet, but it means something. So I can't go into the depth of that yet because I haven't traveled there yet. But I'm sure it'll eventually happen. So anyway. The fish enter into their third heaven. A boat. A place that's unfamiliar to them. Just like when Paul was speaking of the man. He's talking about himself by the way. I can prove it. But he's speaking about a man that was caught up into the third heaven. And there were things that he could think when, when he came back, he couldn't speak those things here on earth. Couldn't speak them on the earth. These fish that are brought into a boat, how could they ever describe what a boat is? They've never been inside of a boat. They haven't experienced that realm. That's their third heaven. Their mid heaven is when they got caught up into the net, in the clouds, in the net. Interchangeable, right? Because we're talking about the rapture. Taken into the air to meet the Lord in the air, right? And then they're brought into the boat. And then what do they do? Well, Peter, who is naked, 
that's very interesting. Naked. Cast himself into the sea. Cast himself into the sea. Right? Your nakedness has been cast into the sea because God has clothed you with righteousness. Now, this old you, let's talk about that snake skin for a moment. That dead skin that falls off the snake. That's the old snake there. The old snake. Now that skin still contains something that has energy because they say that everything is vibrating and moving these molecules these atoms vibrating moving it's energy right even that dead skin looks like it has no energy in it well you go under a microscope and see that these are a bunch of things cells that or 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 atoms that are vibrating molecules that are at a vibration now i'm not a scientist so i won't explain all that stuff right but I'll call it energy that has even a frequency to it. So what 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 comes of this old energy? Does it get buried into uh, the ground? Okay, but it's still it's still energy. Earth might use it for its food or energy source, right? Recycles things. But you have a picture of Jesus on the shore. Now this shore is like I was saying before. This is when heaven and earth are joined together as one. You got it? So this old self, this old self of ours has to go somewhere. Does God just snap his finger and say, well, that old identity of yours just gone, boom. Or is there something that that old identity, that old spirit, let's call it. Because we got a new spirit. We were born again, so we must have had an old spirit that was death because the breath of life had exited out of Adam. He leaked it out pss, like a tire that was slowly getting flatter and flatter and flatter until that tire died because life was leaking out of Adam and he passed that on to his children. So here and I, here you and I were born with these spirits that aren't the spirit of, isn't the breath of life but we're alive, we're alive, but we don't have the breath of life in us until we received Christ in us, right? I'm gonna make a deep video about this soon. Another one. So now that we have the breath of life in us, we have his spirit in us, we're born again, new spirit, joined to the Lord, one spirit with him. A new identity. What happened to the old identity? What happened to that old that old self? If it's like that snake skin, where does it go? Well, you got Jesus there. These fish that were already on this, these coals of fire. These coals of fire. Scripture says our God is an all-consuming fire bring the fish to me bring some of what you got there too I have some here too the ones that were already there are the ones that went up out of their graves before we got raptured right before we got raptured right after they go up we go up too we just don't go first they do the ones that have already died they're old identity went into the all-consuming fire, which is God. Our God is an all-consuming fire, and that fire takes that old identity and consumes it back into God. It's not wasted. It's just gone by the fire of God. And then he says, bring some of the ones you've got too over here. That old identity gets burned off into the all-consuming fire, which is called God. <sighs> Remarkable.
reminds me of a Bible verse when Jesus hands the kingdom back to his Father so that God can be all and in all. Don't be afraid, you guys, to go into the scriptures and rely on the Holy Spirit to give you revelation instead of relying on other people to interpret that word for you. Sure, you can learn from other people. Of course you can. We all do. But when you get into the Word of God and you start to see things that go deeper than anything you've heard out of any other person's mouth before, it's amazing. And now it, become, it becomes one with you. You've made it your own. You're not waiting for somebody to come and interpret it right for you. You've made it your own. And there's so much depth to it. I'm sure there's so much more to that short little story we read. We could go on and on and on and just unveil all of these gemstones of truth that are stored in there. But I now got to cut this video short because I am going to my next destination. So I hope you enjoyed this. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll sign out this time. Have a great one and I'll talk to you real soon.